throughout the, the, the European political system now. It, it's it, it, this this sort of modern liberalism um, where it's kind of almost it's, it's its own kind of form of, of you know, almost kind of a religious war, right? Where, where they 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 elevate these sort of of secular you know humanist goals, be it the the, the fight for climate change. Which, golly gosh darn, if that means we're going to make our people suffer by putting in policies that make us feel like we're helping climate change, then we're going to we're, we're going to find the will necessary to do it. Um, you know, Putin represents you know a, a 19th century world that Europe is desperately trying to free itself from, right? And so Putin must be destroyed. And and so you know the what my concern is is that you have a, a large part of the political environment within Europe that I don't know if is going to be able to find peace with Russia, no matter what is the state of the ground within Ukraine. And, and I, I think that often as Americans, and, and I, I think this is, this is something that, that comes up a lot with talking to some of our scholars, since we do have a very broad international community within the Institute sort of orbit, that you know, us as libertarians in America, we can look at and focus on on everything America does wrong, and we do a we do a whole lot wrong. And because of our size, when we do stuff wrong, it, it's it's wrong on a, a much much larger scale. But I think a lot of our criticisms of the American regime, uh, from a from that ideological perspective, um, manif- are, are, are even larger in Europe. It's just that you're dealing with smaller entities there. So, so their mistakes aren't nearly as big. And I think you see this particular play out particularly with, you know, the, the issues with physical policies within Europe. Um, obviously the, the monetary policies of the ECB as a regional block there, um, have been even worse than the fed has been. Um, we're seeing it now play out with you know, energy production and the demand of Europe for energy, which you know creates this, this very difficult situation for a country, particularly like Germany, that relies so heavily on European oil. I mean, I, I, if you look at some of the charts, uh, Daniel Lacaye, our, our friend over in, in Madrid, uh, he's written about this topic, um, you know, in, in multiple different ways over the last few years. Um, but you know, you can look at the charts about domestic energy production within Europe, and it's gone down steadily, you know, over the past 10, 12 years. Um, which is a direct byproduct of the influence of, you know, the European Green Parties and the Greta Thunberg, you know, sort of phenomenon and things like that. And again, I, I think all of this represents a governing class within these countries that are so disconnected from the consequences. You know, it's truly really recognizing what they are doing to 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 their people and and these these issues. And again, that is very, very concerning when we have this this con- <laughs> treaty alliance to you know, to our hip, um, and, and particularly given the stakes of, of this particular conflict with a nuclear armed uh, country that uh, very much goes against the values of these European leaders. Mm-hmm.